Uh, before Scott talk, I just really want to thank uh, Pat and Jane and the whole crew here for putting on a fantastic show. Really, really here, here, here. And um, I also want to say how pleased I am to be in the company of such wonderful other artists that are showing here today. And, and a special thank you to all of you for coming. Okay, so now... Jim's work is all in this yeah, corner. That's why I'm just... I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you. It's, uh, obviously, I am a mixed media artist, uh, and more specific, uh, assemblage. Um, assemblage is a fancy way of saying that you assemble found objects and put them into some sort of a, hopefully, an art form. Um, I call my work the art of the discarded object. Uh, I try to make a distinction in my own mind that a discarded object has a sense of abandonment, um, that it's something that was not just lost because it was lost, perhaps somebody would like to have it back, but an abandoned um, piece of work uh, has a sense of, uh, again, of, of loss. So anything that's weathered, torn, run over, uh, etc., is important to me. Um, three main words in my work are construction, deconstruction, and reconstruction. The construction part is the object in its original state, whatever that might be. The deconstruction part is as it weathers, as it's torn, as it's run over, etc., the weather affected uh, becomes something else. As an artist, hopefully, I take on the role of, a, of the salvation of constructing it into its new life, its new form. Um, I've been doing this for many, many years. Um, the, uh, Influences that I've had over the years are basically primarily two schools. One is a Russian school, of the avant-garde school in, in Russia, um, which was from 1910 to approximately 1922. And um, the uh, grandfather, there were two, two major schools at that time. There was the suprematist school, which was a very abstract uh, form of art, <clears throat> headed by Malevich. And then there was Vladimir Tatlin, who was the father of the constructivist school at that time. And that's kind of what I gravitate to. And you'll notice in a number of my pieces, I use a lot of Russian uh, lettering because I find that the Cyrillic alphabet is such a strong architectural form that it just, I don't speak Russian, I've never been to Russia, but I'm very fascinated by it. Um, <clears throat> the other school that has influenced me is the Dada school, the Dadaist from, again, right around that same period. Um, formerly started in Zurich, Switzerland, but really had its roots in Germany and France, and then came to the United States. Um, I didn't realize it at the time, but when I sent over the pieces, um, out of the eight pieces here, seven of them, that you may have noticed, have arrows in them. Um, and I didn't do it intentionally, but I do use a lot of arrows. And the reason for it is that it's a very, very strong directional force. Uh, to me, it's the most universal sign that there is. An arrow points in a direction, and you could be from anywhere, and you know which way you're supposed to go. Um, I also use arrows going in opposite directions that create a sort of a yin-yang, opposite pull towards each other in the contrast of the two. I'm not sure that anything here is in there, but, but that's another way that the uh, arrows can be used. Um, other than that, my work, the titles of my work, if you have the time as you're walking around, take a look at the titles. They're um, very, very important. They're an integral part of, of the work. And um, for example, uh, this one is called Tatlin's in a Circle. Now, Tatlin is that constructivist from Russia that I mentioned earlier. So um, that's where um, a lot of the titles come from, a little play on words. Um, and hopefully, they draw you into the piece and make you think a little bit. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Yes, yeah, you're right.